Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I should have waited until you got your... Uh... I, I, t- I was taking a sweater off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Wow. Is it still going? Yeah. Let's put, let's keep this in. This is all in. This is real. I know. Raw. That's what people are paying for. Yeah, some people have switched off already, though. Good. Yeah, good. We don't want them. Yeah, this is real. You if can't you can't handle, handle us at our worst, which is most of the podcast, you cannot handle us at the best. Or our realist. Which is also our worst. Correct. Mm. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, it's the realest co-host I've ever met, it's Nick Mason. <laughs> I'm just over here keeping it real, bro. I agree. Yeah, thanks. How are you feeling about uh, this week's episode? Good. So far. This seems like a trap, but good. Quietly confident? Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that energy you bring. Should I bring it up more, though, I think? No. Okay. I said I like this energy. Okay, great. Just stick with this. Okay. God damn it. Uh, just, a, just a little twinkle in my eye? No. I'm, try, I'm trying to get the twinkle in my no, eye across fuck it, to the you'll listeners. Fuck it, you'll no, fuck no, it. I'm yeah. good at this. <laughs> I'm sh- going to be good at this soon. <laughs> just 10 more years. Just give me 10 more years. No, what episode can't. is this? 496 maybe? Okay, all right. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Okay. Someone will know. Collins will know. He'll put it in the oh, yeah. title. <laughs> Speaking of something else he knows, uh, he puts the time codes below for the uh, topics we're going to talk about this week, including uh, our new segment. Oh, no, that's terrible news. Oh. We've got some terrible news, Mason. Do we? Or do we? That's the question, isn't it? That certainly You're is. going to explain the news and I'm going to guess whether you're being sarcastic or not. Probably, yes. Uh, we've also got some One Piece news. We've got we've got some news on the Lando TV series. One Piece, one piece news counts as my One Piece of news, by the way. I understand. Good. I actually had that. That was my heading. Uh, okay. That I already made that joke. Oh, in your, ma- months in your mind. Ago. No, I wrote it down. Oh, even. did you? I wrote it down. This is months old news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And then we got trailers for uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, Aquaman 2. That's right. Long time coming. Mm. And then, of course, uh, we're finally. We're going to talk gonna, about Luby Tal. We're going to talk about it. Uh, but finally decided to come out in Australia. Yeah. Um, just before it released to streaming. That's well. That that's happened with Ninja, <laughs> happened with Ninja Turtles, didn't it? Yeah, we've 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 hit the dark ages again. This weird, mm. this weird um, just delay, s- just slight delay there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm used to it around the summer, mm. well, our summer with uh, like Aquaman, for example, is coming out here on Boxing Day, as opposed to like the 16th or whatever. Yeah. Because, you know, that's cool. That's cool for us. Traditionally, people love going to the cinemas on a boxing day. They do, don't they? Mm. Yeah. They might see the Hobbit movie. They might see the Hobbit movie. But you shouldn't do that, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Oh, yes. Let's kick, let's kick this off, Mason, with, oh, no, that's terrible news. Oh, I'm now, this. I'm not talking terrible news like someone died, because mm. that is genuinely terrible news. But this is even worse than that. Or is that's, it, though? Yeah, maybe. This is by Vanity Fair. So that was bit, they did a piece on uh, Bad Bunny, right? Oh, yes. You mm. might know from... Uh, Music slash wrestling. Is that what you think? Yeah, I think that's what he's from, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. And that, so there was a whole piece on it and there was a moment because he was attached to a movie called El Muerto. Yeah, that's right. Where you famously predicted the entire plot. Fall. I didn't predict it. Somebody sent it to me. <laughs> they sent me the plot outline. <laughs> and I read it verbatim. <laughs> that's what happened there. So for those who don't know, it was a, he's a very, very, very... Iconic. Very iconic, minor iconic Spider-Man character. villain who's appeared in four pages of one comic. In maybe 2017, I don't know. Uh, you, you're close. All those numbers are close. <laughs> yes. I think, he's, I think he was in like four issues or something. Yeah. But it, as, I think as we, we mentioned in a, in, in, a prior, in a prior episode, the character was created after Sony acquired the Spider-Man rights. So mm. I guess they get first look at all the, yeah, I guess so. the characters, the Spider-Man characters that, that are created. But I don't know who knows. Yeah. I mean, Miles Morales would have been after that. So That's true, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the interviewer said, when I asked him what happened to, to El Muerto, mm-hmm. he hesitated. An awkward <sighs> silence ripples across the table. This isn't me like... I'm not loving that energy, James. No, I'm not painting a pic- I'm not trying to paint a picture here. This is in the This is the article. I'm literally I know I'm not loving article. his energy. Oh, yeah, again, not me, the though. The pause says My everything, My energy doesn't is okay. Yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an awkward silence ripples across the table. Oh, that's bad energy. Next question, asserts his publicist. Ooh. Who's seated in an adjacent booth. I don't know what to say. I didn't. We didn't know the publicist was there. They just. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing. Next question. I'm picturing them in a 1950s diner in Boots. <laughs> the publicist came over that little radio box. Yeah. that's there. You can sometimes order your food through. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Martinez, Bad Bunny replies, calling the issue delicate. Uh, Sola, who's his published, uh, uh, sharpens the point. Obviously, it's out. She says of the film. <laughs> 
So yeah. When she says obviously it's out, it's out now at the, in cinemas. Yeah, you can go see it right That's now. Great. Yeah, not in Australia, but yeah, oh. the world over. Wow. So yeah, I mean, this is a surprise to nobody. Mm. I think maybe they no bunny. Mm, thank you. Mm. I mean, what what what? How much how 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 much would you have to look at this idea to think that this would not like how much? It's obviously not going to work. Yes. Why did they even announce it? Because it's funny. Because it's funny, but also I assume because Bad Bunny is a big recording artist and he's got millions and millions of followers and and, yes. and listeners and purchases of his music and wrestling. Yeah, a lot of people buy his wrestling. They, right? People like his wrestling. They buy it. But do you think they looked at like, for example, The Rock headlining, you know, uh, Black Adam or whatever, mm-hmm. and you know, and he's a bigger star, That's I would true. say, than Bad Bunny, and that didn't do well. Like, mm. what did what did they think was going to happen here? You know, I don't know. He was going to bring this character to prominence. Maybe, but we'll never know. Mm. But obviously it's out. <laughs> obviously it's out. As we say, anything can be good, but usually nothing that Sony makes. Yes, that's right. But sometimes. But sometimes. But, but often not. But sometimes it's good and then you're like, oh, they crunched everyone. That's why it's good. Exactly. I, I get it now. Yeah, and that's good. Mm, good. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's time for one piece of one piece news. Wait, I have to oh. decide whether that's um... – Oh, is that devastating news? Is that the name of the segment? Oh, that's devastating. Yes. Oh, that's devastating. Oh, hang on. You have to say, oh, that's devastating, and I determine whether you're being sarcastic or not. I think okay. that's the premise. Oh, it's devastating. You're being sarcastic. I am, but also mm-hmm. tell me you wouldn't want to have seen how this went. I would have loved to have seen it. It could have been Morbius all over again. God, I cannot. I, it, I can tell you, a la Morbius and a lot of that stuff and Craven, it's going to be one of those movies I get a headache in. <laughs> yeah. In the cinema. Absolutely. I, and I, I think it's. I think it's a focus headache mm. because I'm like, my brain's like, you shouldn't be watching this. You're bringing all your attention to this, but there's no need to. What are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, anyway, anyway, that's devastating. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I was being sincere. You're actually devastated. Yeah, I'm actually devastated. I'm crying. crying. I'm crying. I've never seen you cry this much. <laughs> and you came to my fake funeral that I had to test if you liked me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thanks for coming, by the way. Yeah, and I had a, I was wearing a T-shirt that said, I'm with stupid, and there's an arrow. <laughs> to the grave. To the grave, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I before the before the priest started, I went, okay, you might think this is pointing to my dick, but it's not. In a minute, I'm going to be standing over the grave, and I'm. It's angled, it's ang- it's kind of down angle, angle. Slide yeah. an angle, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, one piece of One Piece news, Mason. I would love that. Which also counts as your one piece of news this Absolutely week. Absolutely it does. It's been renewed for season two. Has it for real? Yeah, no, for real. So oh. Marty Alders- Alderstein, Alderstein, the CEO of One Piece production company Tomorrow Studios, said this, uh, said via Variety also that the scripts are ready. This is before it was announced. So I They mean, called the manga. That's right. Uh, so that's good because, you know, they just need to um, figure out what's the, the writers and actors strike, which – there might have been some movement on this week, but nothing Ooh, concrete. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, because you know, studios are they okay. they be panicking. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, that is good news for fans of One Piece. Yeah. Specifically the the uh, the live action show, mm-hmm. uh, and the manga and anime fans who like the live action show. Sure. Uh, less good news for people who ate the show. Yeah, that's, I'm covering all the bases. This is here. interesting. Covering insight. all the bases. Yeah. So so um, manga fans. Yep. Yeah. Didn't like the live action version. That's bad news for them. Yeah. Anime fans who didn't like the live, live action, action version, version. That's bad for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're an anime fan, if if you're a fan of the manga, but yeah. not a fan of, but like personally not a fan of the anime, mm. this could be good or bad news. Yeah. Okay. I get you. Yeah. And same for the if you're a fan of the anime but not the manga. I think. What would you say, like, if people who enjoyed the first season mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and maybe the second season isn't going to be bad, but they don't know that? Is that good <sighs> or bad news for them? I think that's good news for, for now. Them. For that, for now, yeah. Unless they think that that's going to reflect poorly on the anime and the manga, mm-hmm. in which case they probably that's then they they wouldn't like that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Because if people have only watched the live action show and the, the second season is bad, yeah, then they go, "Oh, you're a One Piece fan, didn't like that show," and they'd be like, "But it's good. It's good. It's good. Maybe it's good. It's still going, by the way. We got a lot of feedback. Well, about the, I knew that, did but you? I didn't want to tell you because I was pretending okay. to be a guy who didn't know anything. Uh, about interesting. Anime. Okay, yeah, but no, I know that. Yeah, yeah. It's all still going. Anyway, I think I've covered everybody. Yeah, yeah. There, so I appreciate yeah. that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody... Wait, people who don't have electricity in their houses. Okay. They're indifferent. Great. I bet they would be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this this bit of news on the Lando TV series is by uh, Pablo Torre finds out podcast. Uh, they spoke with screenwriter Stephen Glover. And mentioned how, like... Now, Stephen Glover is related to... Donald Glover. Correct. Brother of... Uh, he worked on Atlanta. We looked into this relatively recently. That's right. We're like, is he talented? Turns out, probably it turns out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
do you, does somebody is does it counts as nepotism if you're siblings, right? Sure. Okay, great. Or is it just a father and – is it just a parent and child thing, nepotism, the term? But how does it work in terms of like – so Chris Hemsworth's brother, older brother, was already acting before Chris Hemsworth. Yep, uh-huh. Does that – but now Chris Hemsworth has exceeded his brother. I'm just going to Google the network. word nepotism in and network. I'm going to say – Does that mean that Chris Hemsworth is still a nepotism brother? Oh, because that's how he got in, yeah. do you think? Yeah. I don't know. I think he got in because he was – because of Home and Away. Okay. Uh, nepotism, the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives, friends, or associates – don't even have to be related. Give me a friend. Give me a friend. Whoa. So that means wow. your nepotism, man. That's right. <laughs> Don't you remember? Yeah. Because I started the YouTube channel first and the kids, yeah. you know, it was already going to be big success without you. I agree. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> it was lacking something. A second person. Um, a good energy. Good energy, exactly. Mm. Anyway, they were asking about the Lando TV series because uh, they, they were talking about maybe there was going to be a movie initially, but then mm. Solo bombed and whatever. And then mm. they're like, we'll make it a Disney Plus series. And, yeah, you know, yeah. those are all and then Star Wars whatever. was like, we're out of the movie business forever yeah. now. And now they're like, actually, we're back in the movie business. Mm. So it turns out the Lando series is now going to be a Lando movie. Mm. And Variety have confirmed this, which is interesting, but they didn't need to do that because the guy who's writing it said it first. <laughs> okay, right. On Pablo Torre Finds Out podcast. So, you know. That's interesting. But uh, how do you feel about Disney going back to the solo movies, but not solo the movie? Mm. But he might be in it. I'm excited. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Like Donald Glover. <laughs> yeah, me too. Again, I mean, it, I guess if, you know, if, if it's, is it so to be Stephen Glover and Donald Glover writing this movie? Is that where, so, yeah. where we're going with that? That mm. sounds great. Yeah. I'm excited for that. But again, uh, when Solo was being written by Lord and Miller or produced by them? How, do, how was that working? Directed by them? What yeah, was, directed, what was the deal with directed them? at some Okay. Point, yeah. Well, I mean, it was, I was excited for that, but then Disney didn't like that. They didn't like it. Because it was too out of the ordinary or something, or maybe they crunched everyone. That's right. In a trash yeah. compactor, Star Absolutely. Wars style. Star Wars style. Um, so maybe uh, this will, maybe, I mean, it is entirely possible that this will get you know, flattened out yeah. to suit the, the current Star Wars style, which is offend no one. So, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, I mean, look, yeah. Hope springs eternal, James. Doesn't adjust. And I think that this will be good. Yeah. So, there okay. you go. Yeah, yeah. If it comes out. Yeah, yeah. And also, I'm, hope, I'm hoping for, like, self-contained adventure that doesn't have anything to do with acquiring any super weapon plans or anything like what that. What about Cloud City? If he finds it, he goes, I'll tell this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone left the door unlocked. This is mine now. He's a he's a young adventurer and like an elder adventurer is like, yeah, and he throws him Cloud City. <laughs> he catches it because he's cool. By the, the tip? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to need this, kid. Oh, Cloud City. All right. I, I do need this, actually. <laughs> this is great for me. Oh, uh, that's good stuff. Um, so I, I forgot to mention this, but we've got something uh, of, is concerning the new Deadpool 3 movie, which okay. is mainly about 50% shot. Okay. Um. So this is via Mutant Updates on Twitter who says, Reliable Insider, the comics kid, has dropped a hint suggesting that one of the Wolverine variants in Deadpool 3 might actually be the MCU's Wolverine. Oh. KC Walsh replied to that and said, not exactly the movie. Uh, not exactly the movie will end with a good idea of who the MCU's Wolverine will be. I see. So that's Interesting. Okay, so we're potentially we're getting a Wolverine that is not Hugh Jackman, yeah. but whoever is cast yes. as Wolverine in the new MCU X Men continuity. Okay, interesting. Any names. or at least that. So, but the the phrasing there suggests we're not going to see the actor specifically. Are we going to see not. it? Or maybe we, we do see the actor maybe, yeah. and not the maybe the yeah. Wolverine. I'm ba- I'm going to guess teaser, and we see. The new costume in Shadow or something sure, okay. like that. What yeah, do you yeah. think? Yeah, I, I think they're going to unveil who it is. Okay. And I don't know whether we'll see it specifically, but yeah, right. it will. that way this movie isn't like a closed mm-hmm. universe. It can be like, well, here's yeah, yeah. the next thing. What do you want? Do you want Do you want Hugh Jackman? I don't know if we – have we never – I don't think we've ever talked about this. Do you want Hugh Jackman six foot plus – guy or do you want five foot three 250 pounds i mean pounds I, I think a, short, a shorter guy would be like fun and yeah. a different direction but i'm not i don't care right you know and everything <laughs> can be done with angles i know people keep talking about daniel radcliffe but mm. i don't think that's a, like a great choice like at this point no yeah no and i like daniel radcliffe. he's great in everything yeah. but but could be uh, a variant he could be a variant mm. but uh, yeah i want just kind of Sort of Neanderthal looking, yeah, and like short and you, wide. Is there an actor who Danny DeVito? Okay, yeah, 
Let me just check. Uh-huh. If he's Danny available. DeVito's still alive. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Wolverine fan cast. I know people have mentioned like Tom Hardy. I quite like that. Okay, right. Well, oh, so yeah, uh, like you said, we can fix it with angles. Yeah. Oh, Taron Egg- Egerton, Egerton, whatever his name is. Mm. I like that because he's he's not huge, but he's mm. kind of that build, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone put Thomas Jane. I don't love that. Uh, it's a lot of Taron. A lot, a lot of, of these guys are given given tall vibes, though. What about John Berenthal? He's already the Punisher. I He's know. He's already the Punisher. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't mind that either. Some people are saying Anthony Starr. No, he's too. He's a handsome, handsome, tall, handsome. I mean, he's not that tall, but he seems he yeah. gives off tall energy. Yeah, I don't think he's actually that tall because yeah, right. he's on boots. He's in big boots or whatever. Mm, but okay. um, looking here, yeah, yeah, there's some. There's not really a Scott Eastwood. I think he's too Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and he's but we've seen him with like yeah. side, big sideburns, and I think that's okay. Look, mate, I like Taron Egerton. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, for the ones that I've seen, but they could just cast unknown. Really. Yeah, I was just going to say a horrible unknown, <sighs> just a just a real piece of shit. Yeah. That's right. Just someone riddled with controversy we don't know about Oh, yet. my God, yes, please. Yeah. Uh. Oh, speaking of riddled with controversy, is this worth bringing up? Did you see that Jonathan oh, the video Majors? <laughs> Jonathan Majors and he was breaking up a fight between two teenage girls or something like that, yeah. and he was doing it Jurassic World style. <laughs> he like, was. You're right in the middle, like, stop. Don't don't fight, girls. And there's speculation that, like, this is a set up. PR set up. Yeah, right. It certainly looks set up. Yeah. But who knows, man? Yeah. Who really knows? I mean, also, I think he could have done terrible things. Mm-hmm. Which we don't know the extent of. It, it's all going to court or whatever. Uh-huh. But also want to break up a fight between two teenage girls. Yeah, that's yeah. so. Mm. I don't. I, who, like, who cares? Wow, <laughs> I care. Do you about all human life? Okay, including teenage girls. Who are Where were you then? You just let you let him run in. You know, that could have been you. It's true. Breaking them up, I, Jurassic World. I could have been a hero that people always thought was doing a PR stunt. Yeah, I would have been worried that they'd turn on me. And then I'm suddenly fighting yeah. two teenage girls. Well, not even fight, but they just like <laughs> they just they look you up and down. Yeah, and they go, "Nice shoes," and you're like, "Oh, I thought these were good shoes." Oh. You have to throw them out. You have to throw them out. You have to throw them out, mate. Hey, yeah. way to stand. I thought I stood normally, but I don't apparently. <laughs> no, kids can be cruel. They certainly can. Yeah. Uh, trailers of Hoy Mason. <laughs> Missed this one last week because we recorded a little early, but Monarch Legacy of Monsters. That's right. The Apple Plus TV series, which spans multiple eras of uh, the Godzilla verse, the, mm-hmm. the movie v- version. And we see uh, Kurt Russell is played by two different actors, including Kurt Russell's son, White Russell. So Kurt and, Russell is being played by Kurt Russell and White Russell. Correct, exactly. Right, I love that. Over multiple decades, we see John Goodman returns, so who you mm. might recognize from. Was he in Cold He was Skull in Island? Skull Island, yeah. Uh, so we might see some people dip in and out. Oh, maybe Brie who's, Larson. Who's show, maybe Brie who's Larson. In Kong Skull Island, who's I think, maybe. Up? She's in that one, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And all of that. Uh, I mean, Apple really, they pull out all the stops for their shows. Mm. They all look spectacular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you look at Foundation, which I haven't, but people Great. look at it and they yeah. say, look at this. Look at this. And, go, oh, I'll get, I, and I say, I'll get to it. They say they've pulled out all the stops as Apple has wanted to do. <laughs> and you go, I agree. Mm. You know? get a new iPhone? You said a new iPhone? Because people are like, boo, it's the same. I'm thinking about getting a Google Pixel. A Google Pixel? A Google Pixel. I was just thinking about that the other day. Why is that? What's good about that one? I don't know. Just Mm. got a good vibe. I know people with Google Pixels. Okay. Well, are you judging the phone or are you judging the person who's holding the Google Pixel? I can judge both. Mm. I'm constantly Mm. judging both. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I try not to judge. I try not to judge in general. Mm. You know, I don't like to bring that energy uh, Mm. to anything except for this where I'm judging you for judging. (laughs) Okay, right. So you're reserving all your judgment for me that's for right. judging. <laughs> yes, that's Interesting. right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. What if I just never judged? No, nah, you are though. Oh, it's like the Death Star laser. I just want to focus in on, you know, just judge one person at a time, which is you. That's cool. Yeah. I think that's cool. <laughs> uh, also in this trailer, they weren't, they weren't shy about showing Godzilla. No. They just get some Godzilla. I thought in this trailer I'd be like, well, they're not going to show Godzilla. because. Uh... Yeah. But then I'm remembered. They already have the character model. That's right. So they can just chuck it in wherever. Absolutely. And it's free. You know, it's, it's free and it's, it's easy. Basically free. Basically free and yeah. easy to do that. Probably so. cheaper than free. Yeah. I mean, it's already been made. That's right. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's like a I house. reckon the VFX artists probably have to pay them yeah. to put Godzilla in there. Because it's, it's such a you know prestige thing to do, put Godzilla in a monster thing. Yep. I completely agree. Mm. Love that. Oh. I'm just going to let Ollie out. Great, Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Hello. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> it's dog time, everyone. The dog's visiting. <laughs> yeah. <It> is. <laughs> Do you hate how that dog's 11 and will die soon? No. You don't hate that? No. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to get a dog. 
I said to Claire, I don't want to get a dog uh-huh. because I'm like, I'll attach to the dog and I love the dog uh-huh. and then the dog will die. Mm. And she could live for another five years. That's true. You know, she's a smaller breed of whatever she is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, God, looking forward to this happening to me. Mm. Just what I needed. You reckon you get her stuffed? Yeah. Yeah, great. Good. <laughs> Won't even do it before. <laughs> you should get her stuffed and, like, doing an activity that she would never do. Like, she's got a <laughs> duck in her mouth. Like, she's caught a duck. <laughs> She's like a, okay. like a like a hunting, hunting dog. dog. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny because she doesn't yeah. swim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, rescuing some hostages. Oh yeah, she's got, a, she's got an assault rifle and she's yeah. kicking the door down. She's normally taking hostages. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Actually, that's funny. Another trailer smoking a pipe. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one. That would be cool. She smokes cigarettes. <laughs> um, Aquaman two has a trailer. Yeah, the Lost Kingdom. You're telling me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now this is. The, apparently, the latest release of a DC movie trailer. I'll pry to it. The movie. Yeah, right. So I looked into like, when did the Flash trailer come out? Because, of course, the Flash came out mid year. The first oh. Flash trailer came out on, in October of 2021. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, right. this is the kind of numbers we're dealing with mm, here. This is real down to the wire stuff here. Yeah. So, so is, it, this still, is this still coming out this year? Yeah, for us. Yeah. Boxing Day. Oh, that's right. Yes. For everyone else, December 16th. Okay. But, right. um, so, this time, Aquaman, he's a dad. Potentially a single dad. Dad Quaman? Dad Quaman, thank you. He's aqua dad. Li- aqua dad. He's living with his dad. That's right. Who's also an aqua dad because he's a lighthouse keeper. That's true. Yeah. He's also a normal dad. That's right. For a lot of it, except for the lighthouse thing. Yeah, right. He's also, he now has to be mates with his brother, Orm. Orm. Because yes. Orm got banished. Yeah. Presumably because he tried to get a whale to attack the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, now, I can't remember what happened at the end well, of that Well, see, movie. here's the thing, because I, I watched this trailer and the entire time I'm like, did Orm... Mm. Prince of the Sea or whatever his name is. Yeah. Ocean Master. Yeah. Did he do anything irredeemably bad in the first one where you'd be like, I don't think we should be friends. I don't think this this is going to work out, honestly. Yeah. Did he murder a lot of people? Maybe. Did he wash up some weird stuff? He definitely did the wash up the weird stuff yeah. thing onto the, onto some, the surface Some world. crook portos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. kids could have found. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't some want six pack rings that some kids could get caught in. Awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful man. Awful um, fish man. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I'll have to do a rewatch, but I won't. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a commentary. We'll do a commentary. Okay, that's, we'll a, commentary. that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Warm's back. Damn, Patrick Wilson's ripped. You like yeah. that about him? Good for him. Yeah, I like him too. Unless he's bad, in which case I'll take that back if yeah, that yeah. ever comes out. Um, so <laughs> he has to fly. Uh, he has to flight. He has to fight Black Manta, mm. who now. Who's Back Manta? Back Manta. And he also has a trident. And it's slightly, it's a different trident than what we've previously it's a different. It's a green trident, it's a green so it's trident. a cursed trident. And what does that mean? It's evil. Yeah. And they're going to clash tridents. And who's got the stronger trident? Probably Aquaman. Probably Aquaman in the end. Yeah, or yeah. his trident will break. And then he'll have to find another, another trident, trident in the Lost whatever. Kingdom yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah something yeah, like yeah. that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, thought, you thought your trident was good, Aquaman, but this is actually the first act of the movie. So my trident broke your trident. So you're going to have to go on a perilous journey to the Lost Kingdom and get a better trident. I'm fairly confident that he went on a uh, journey to get a better trident in the last movie. Yeah, he met Mary Poppins. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Who's a sea monster. Yeah, he did. Julianne. I thought you meant like Nicole Kidman, um, who's not Mary Poppins, but yeah. she did guide him towards a trident. That is true, yeah. Um, so Amber Heard also is in this. In, we see her in for one uh, second. One second. She appears to be in some sort of... She looks like she's dying. Yeah, she, she's <laughs> in a porthole. We see her in a porthole. She's banging against some glass or something. Yeah. She seems not to be able to get out. Now, is this a misdirect or is this... Is this a, is is she going to die in the movie? Is this a misdirect, but she's actually in the movie a lot? Or are they like, we're just going to minimize her appearance in this trailer so people don't get upset? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, because it's it filmed a quite a long time ago. Mm. Uh, one character who might get a lot more play, though, is Topo, who you might remember is the drumming oh, octopus. Yes, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, apparently, according to James Wan, director, will have a stronger presence in uh, this film. He's an actual character in this one. He's the president of the United States Oh, now. my God. Yeah, that's right. Well, well earned, I say. Yeah. Get off my plane. You know, I wouldn't get off. I'd want to stay for the the rhythms. But um, Mm. now, look, there's just been talk Mm -hmm. that this is the worst movie that DC have made. Mm. And, and it can't be. And it, <laughs> we, we, we proclaim that that is, cannot be true. Yeah. Um, and that Warner Brothers are just going to fart it out <laughs> and then do a, Like a fart in the, a bath or an ocean exactly. or a swimming pool. And hopefully nobody notices, mm. despite the first one making a billion dollars. I mean, people, you know, I, I don't know how people are going to react to this in general. I think it's going to be interesting to see what the span of a couple of years. Yeah. 
turns a billion dollar character into whatever it is going to be. Sure, yeah. Like, okay. is this gonna is this gonna be a half a billion dollar movie? Is it gonna be a fifty million dollar movie? We just don't. We know. We can't tell yet. Yeah, we just don't know. Yeah, but also like the last six or seven DC movies have exclusively been bombs. Mm. But also, first Aquaman. Weird hit for no reason. Made a right. billion dollars. Yeah, can't tell. Don't know. I think it was probably all the the um, dialogue scenes that were interrupted with sudden explosions. Oh yeah, that that was pretty exciting. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be something similar in this? Yes, it's going to happen great. at least nine times. That's great. Yeah, but ha- coming out of this, I think it's going to be explosion scenes that are um, that are interrupted by dialogue. That's correct. Yes. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shh, keep it down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How you feel though? What are you thinking? I'm excited for this one. Are you? Yeah, kind of. Why? Jason Momoa. Yeah, I like him. Um. Patrick Wilson. Yep. Yep. The guy who plays Black Manta, who I, who I definitely also know. also in uh, Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, apparently Willem Dafoe. Not in it. Not in it. Okay. As whoever he played. Mm. Volko? Valkran? Volko. Volkman. Mm. Milkman. The Milkman. The Milkman. Ocean Milkman. Ocean Milkman. Ocean Milkman. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think also, like, I don't, I don't re- really like that first one that much. Mm. I like how weird it is. Yeah, sure. Uh, but other than that, like, I don't remember being particularly. Yeah, yeah. Abdul Mateen the yes. second. Who I like, but also called uh, comic book movies clown work at one point. I, oh, I did too. He's yeah. not wrong though. Yeah, he's not wrong. Yeah. Also, you can do clown work. That's fine. Work. Absolutely fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think some people have a different definition of clowning. Yeah. But I think he meant the regular way. No, he didn't mean in like <laughs> what a mysterious. He didn't mean in. A, the, he didn't mean the, the the French art of clowning. No, no, he no, meant no. like honking a big horn yeah. and putting on a red nose. That's what he meant. <laughs> That's what he meant. Yeah. Uh, and coming in the the alleged runtime at this point, though, this could change as an hour and fifty five minutes, which is one of DC's shortest movies, uh, which isn't that short. No, uh, but it's Birds of Prey. I think is like six minutes shorter at this point, okay. and um, and all of that. But yeah, I guess we'll just wait, won't we? We'll no, wait we'll, no, let's not wait. Okay, let's not wait. Let's devise a means cinemas. to see it early. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want to, but you could. You let's can set up a campaign. Okay. Somehow release the movie you're going to release, but yes. release it now. Yeah, and we could have, like, like, release the Kraken, except yep. they say release the movie and release it now. Just give it to us. <laughs> Just send us a copy. Yes, that's right. We're good for it. So we can record our podcast in advance so we could take a week off. Oh, my God. The dream. Yeah. All right, should we move it along? Yes. Well, it's been a month, but oh, I yes. guess we're going to talk about Blue Beetle. If anyone even cares anymore, they why don't we just don't. go and go sit in a corner and die? Yeah, maybe we Because no will. one cares. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think we should stay alive. Yeah, I'll, I'll I think that'd be cool. Actually, um, so just talking numbers mm-hmm. on a budget of one hundred and four million dollars, uh, this made at the box office one hundred and fourteen point nine million. We're okay. going to get a slight boost from the two tickets that I bought to see and the one that you presumably bought. Yeah. Now, I'm did gonna... you buy one for your son, or did you just buy two tickets to put your bag on a seat? Because you were like, seat. "There's probably not going to be room in this cinema." For my bag yeah. on a spare seat, unless yeah. exactly, yeah, yeah, and I did take my son, but I wanted him to stand. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're correct. Okay, um, so no, we checked out the movie Blue Beetle. Um, so yeah, not good in terms of box office return. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, they didn't promote it. James, look, even though it's the start of the DCU, yeah. you technically, look, James, up until this, look, James, you know, I love to uh, traverse the wonderful city of Melbourne. Uh, sure. You know, laneways, coffee culture, that whole thing. I yeah. love it. I love the whole bit. And I can tell you with with some certainty, with, with a lot of certainty, that up until last week, the only advertisement I saw for Blue Beetle was like one bus shelter ad. Wow. But of this week, as of this week, James. It's none? Two bus shelter ads. Same. Did, did you go past the same bus shelter though? No, these were different bus shelters. However, they were those electronic ones. That flick through different ads. Oh, okay. So I think it's probably they're probably it's sharing real estate. Yeah. So they're advertising Blue Beetle about twenty five percent of the time. So strictly speaking, from a mathematical perspective, there's half an ad for Blue Beetle in Melbourne currently, <laughs> and I think it worked because we saw it. We didn't saw we? it. Got us. Yeah, it got us. Got didn't us. It? Now, if you weren't doing this podcast, would you see it? Yes, I probably would have waited. But mm-hmm. oh, we'll talk about what we think of it. Yeah. What yeah. do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. All right. Well, there's uh, Jaime Reyes. Yep. He's a cool dude. Yep. He's just come back from Gotham City. He's uh, he's got a he's got his degree. Yep. He's got his uh, and he and he's come back to the city of wherever he lives. Pal- Palmyra. Maybe. Palmyra City. It's I'll tell you gone. this much. Yep. He is Palmyra City. He is just chomping at the bit to do a Spider-Man origin story. Yeah, that's exactly Cannot right. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and but he's come back to Palmyra City where his family live, and it turns out that while he's been away, 
Uh, everything's gotten worse. Everybody's lost their jobs and their houses and their businesses. It's Susan Sarandon's fault. It is Susan Sarandon's fault. Yeah, yeah. And if you see Susan Sarandon, you make sure you put you know you put in a bad word. That's right to uh, her about yeah. her. Yes. Okay. Right. She's just going to ignore it. No. You should put a bad word to her boss. Okay. Maybe you should do or that. advertisers. Uh, that's good. That's perfect. You know? Yeah. 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 Mm. Go on though. Ah, uh, but then uh, he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a big job in the big city. Mm-hmm. Then he gets blue beetle powers instead. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. And then he's like, what am I do with, what will I, what will I do with this? I don't want to be a superhero, even though it's cool as hell. Maybe he could fight a guy. I think he would fight a guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would yeah. be my suggestion. Nice. If I, love I knew that. him, if I was in my like if I was in his family. Yeah. That would be my suggestion to him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is a pretty solid, if formulaic, origin movie with some moments in it that kind of make it a little bit better than average. Yeah, I think this movie grew on me. Across the runtime, like yeah. a horrible blue beetle. Oh, okay. You know, mm. yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you know, it is undeniably formulaic. But mm. this is a new character. Yes. Uh, I think the strength of it is that I mean, they'd mention it throughout the movie constantly. Yes. But his family. Yeah, and it's, here's the thing. I think if the family were unpleasant yeah, or like that's, we didn't a, like this them, is a different movie. Yeah, this is a, this would be a movie that I, I know would definitely lo- hate. A lot of people maybe don't like George Lopez. Maybe does broad comedy or whatever. I don't right. know anything about him. So I'm yes, like, I, yeah, he's fun. Mm. He's fun in this. Maybe he's terrible. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, and so, I won't look into it. So, you know, we, I mean, he's got this extended family. So it's he's got his dad, his mom, his grandma, his sister, yep. and his uncle slash backup dad, just in case anything happens to his regular dad. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in I case think, the Spider-Man origin story happens. Unless, yeah, if he gets, if everybody gets Spider-Man. <laughs> they're like, we're in a Spider-Man right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Damn, you're a young hero with a bunch of family. Yep. Somebody's going down. <laughs> Um, I really liked, I think his, na- his name is pronounced Sholo Mari Duenya. Who is the, the lead, yeah. Who is the lead. He's from uh, Cobra Kai. Mm. I think, I like they didn't put him in high school. Like in real life, he's 22. And in, the, in this, they're just like, he's 22. Nice. Not that he looks like particularly old, but, you know, mm. that's that's good. He's yeah. just like, this is, a, this is a man. I found him <laughs> really charming. I like, you want, you root for him. Mm. I think he sold it really well. I yeah. think, like, a, a, apparently he did a lot of... Like a lot of that suit is practical, so it would be stuntman a lot of it. But you know, he's he's in that suit. They put him in a real jet put him pack. In a real jet pack at one point. But mm. I I think he I think he did a really good job in this, and I think there's a good chance that like we won't be getting another Blue Beetle movie. But it wouldn't surprise me if he pops up in. They probably maybe something. put him in the Justice Society. Yeah, they or totally like could. That, yeah. yeah, I think he. What's the team? What's the team stuff that's coming up? Oh God, great question. I mean, is there one? There's Creature Commando. Creature could be a Creature Commando. Maybe. There's the there's the Authority. He's not really in that. Yeah, they could do Blue Beetle Booster Gold. Yeah, a lot of the authority is like shape shifting liquid metal guys. Yeah. So I don't know if there's room for another shape shifting liquid metal kind of guy. Sure, but okay. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there is though. Mm. What do you think of the suit though and the look? Generally pretty good. I, I liked think, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But also the suit comes with a personality. Yes. How do you feel about that? I don't think they really sold it enough. I don't think they really sold when it can work on its own and when okay. someone is in control of the suit. Mm. Like it's a sim- it's a symbiotic thing like Venom. Yeah. But there but there's moments in it where the the suit is like he's like I I want to do this and it's like okay you can but then sometimes it just does whatever it wants yeah. and he says stop doing that and it just keeps going yeah. and it's like which give me give me some clearly Sometimes it'll kill or stop him from killing. So, yeah, yeah, so give give us give us some clearly defined rules. The way that I saw it was that the more that he was kind of in sync with the suit, the more their personalities like lined up. I right. mean, they pretty much say that, but um and so by the end like their values align. And they had a shopping montage. And a shopping montage exactly. Mm. Yeah. Put on big hats. <laughs> big hats, Mason. <laughs> um this also this was I think my son's first live action comic book movie. Whoa. Yeah. So for him, it's like, I love this. Yeah, I've right. never seen any of this. Oh, yeah. Where I'm okay. like, I've seen this 12 times this year. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing this every week since 2008. <laughs> just just over and over and over again. Yeah. But I'm again, glad you've, I'm glad there are some fresh eyes here. Yeah. But again, not to, because I think that, again, there is some things in here that I like. I think also they did some interesting stuff like weapon wise and fight wise with his suit. Mm. Like some of the stuff that he pulls out and a lot of it's just like blades and blasters. Yeah. But I think they, they do sell that. They sell the impact. They yeah. sell like, you know, when it's cutting through or whatever. Damn. There's a bit where the, yeah. where the wings split a school bus and that's yeah. like not just a regular bus and that looks quite good. Mm. The big sword, Mason. I love the big, big sword. sword. Yeah. I mean, again, DC once again has that second move disadvantage where 
Iron Man had the nanotech suit in Infinity War and Endgame, yeah. which does a lot of the same stuff. Yep. So, but again, your son hasn't seen that. He hasn't so. seen that. He doesn't know. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't know that, you know, that movie's better than this movie probably. <laughs> I, I can't remember. Right. You know, uh-huh. used to say, used to say what is better. How do you feel about the villains, both Susan Sarandon and Red Blue Beetle? Uh, Susan Sarandon's like, I'm big corporate, I'm corporation. I mean, yeah, look, I'm I like, I like Susan Mason. Sarandon generally. She was a little bit evil for no reason. Okay. Like cackling evil. No, that was the patriarchy, whatever. She was like... My family oh, were I see, me. right. But she, so I'm going to make a, I'm going to militarize our entire company. I guess that's true. Kill a bunch of people. No, that's true. But I guess she was, she, she did feel a bit like, aha, I'm, I'm giving, you know, it wasn't a case of just like, well, I'm taking back what's mine. She was like, and I'm, I'm really enjoying being mean to people while I do it. Even people who had nothing to do with this. Yeah, you know? okay, yeah, yeah. It felt a little bit scenery chewing to me, but. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a comic book movie. Yeah, yeah. But what about Red Blue Beetle? I'm sorry. I liked him. Yeah. And I like the, and again, because it comes down to at the end that, Two, there's two guys with the same powers fighting, right? Yeah. But I think they the suits look different enough uh-huh. and they yeah. both kind of did enough different things and their personalities were different enough where it wasn't like, okay, this again, even though it literally was. It literally was again. like swords and, and blasters and stuff. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But no, I didn't, I didn't mind that at all. I think that's probably because they sold like the characters of it. Yeah, right. And I'm uh-huh. like, okay, they're both relatively interesting. Yeah. And have their own motivations. That's true. I think maybe this probably veers a little bit into spoiler territory, but I think we didn't get the villain's backstory until right at the end. And I'm like, maybe we could have got that a little earlier. You just did a lot of being like, family's a weakness and I'll kill you for that. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, maybe he didn't really think that. Yeah, but that's the who I I wouldn't spoil it. <laughs> okay, Everyone's right, right. been out. Everybody right, right, has seen right. this and wants to see it. Uh, well, that's true. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but if you're thinking about watching it on streaming, if you're in the US or pirating it, yeah, you know, uh, a thing that there was a kind of a, a recurring through line throughout this movie where Jaime's like, "I'm not a killer. I never will be." But his whole family's just like, just, "We're all killers. We're all killers. We'll help you kill." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're having so much fun killing. Quite frankly. Okay, well, that's interesting because they do get a lot of Blue Beetle tech in this. Because mm. one of the things I really liked about this was there is uh, the presence of the original Blue Beetle. Blue Beetles, Blue Beetles even. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah, is in this universe. Yeah, they haven't, they have, this isn't a, this isn't a fresh start in the, in like a Iron Man, first Iron Man no. kind of way. Again, this is, this is, we're in the pre existing DC universe, a version of the, the DCU. Comic. It's the first movie. Oh, that's right. It is the first movie in the DCU. So they've, they've established that there were, Previous Blue Beetles, including probably the most famous one, which is Ted Cord, yeah. who is the non-powered hero who, who drives the big bug ship and has a bunch of bug gadgets, and he's the inspiration for Night Owl and Watchmen. Yeah, and that, I mean, go, going into his, like, lair mm. and seeing all his tech, and especially the ship, mm-hmm. and, being and you know, and it's, there's obviously so many similarities to Watchmen because well, we, everybody probably knows this story, but, yeah, Alan Moore wanted to use... Well, that he wanted to use. Yeah, he, Blue he, wanted he wanted to use he wanted, Peacemaker. He wanted yeah, to use, he wanted to use the characters from Charlton Comics that DC had bought. Nothing characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, and they wouldn't let him. So he he and um, so we created more iconic characters. Yeah, he and Dave Gibbons re- redesigned and renamed them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, I loved all of that. But again, especially the ship. It's a moment where it like tanks out. Yeah, uh-huh. and like does does some stomping about. I I, uh-huh. I enjoyed all of that. Yeah. Uh, let's do some spoilers, I Okay, guess. I'm going to say best movie ever. I think I it was a lot it. of fun. I yeah. think it was definitely worth a watch. I wasn't like, I'm wrapped to be going to see this, but in the yeah. end, I, I quite enjoyed you it. You know what I think it was? I think that I was sort of dismayed by the trailer yeah. because the trailer really did give away all the beats of the movie and I'm like, okay, well, it is going to be. You know, well, Blue I, beats. I know, ooh, I know it's going to be, I know it's going to be all about family and et cetera and it's going to be the origin story and he's going to be like, whoa, what's going on kind of what thing. What was we, going I, on, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't understand uh, media. But um, I don't know. I, there was another trailer before that movie as well. The Marvels? I got the Marvels. It was the Marvels and I think it was – the. It gave me that exact same vibe of like you are giving me too much information yeah. here, and I I think you are you are selling a certain amount of your audience short. Mm. Like you, like there's a there's a moment in the Marvel trailers where they're like, okay, well they've entangled our powers, and you've got the power to do this with light, and you've got the power to do this, mm. and you've got the power to do this, and they're all and I, I don't. You don't need to put all that in the trailer. No. Just give me a vibe and a and a and a yeah. I a, think they're a villain panicking. and some iconic images, and I'm I'm happy to go. I think but they're if, panicking because yeah. they can't promote it properly. Oh, that maybe that's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, maybe that. Maybe they've done a bunch of market research for this and for the Marvels and all subsequent stuff, where they're like, people need to know exactly what is happening and what's going to happen and yeah. the the basic premise. But I'm. There must. Be, surely there are people like us who are like, 
I don't need all that. I just yeah. Give me give me enough to give me just give me a, a a slightly longer teaser that is just fun imagery and we can figure it out on our own. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, but instead, the thing the thing that we got the thing that we got anyway. Right? The first I guess live action superhero movies that my son is going to see at the movies will be this and the Marvels. All oh, right. Really? So you know, huh? I think a lot of people would have opinions about that. That I'd love to hear. <laughs> oh yes, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Kids don't care. No, they just true. They'll, they'll see a fun thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So you're not going to show him Captain Marvel before the yeah, Marvel? Maybe I don't know. Okay. I did think about like taking. You're not going to sit him down and watch, make but, him watch an MCU well, movie did, every day. I did think about that and like, do I take him through these? And I was just like, I don't really want to. And mm. like, this is my kind of thing. Yeah. And he likes his own thing. Yeah. And I don't. I just. I don't want to. And I think if he watch, maybe if he watches the Marvel and he goes, oh, I like Captain Marvel. Yeah, then, I like Ms. Marvel. Yeah. You could be like, well, they're there if you want to watch. Well, there's a hundred movies. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna watch them out of order. <laughs> Oh, you! Oh, you like Captain Marvel? Well, guess what? Iron Man two thousand eight. We're gonna yeah. have to start because the, the Captain Marvel won't make any sense without yeah. us. I think if I did, it would be like I, first Iron Man, first Captain America, maybe Thor. Okay. I might even skip that. Go straight to the Avengers. Probably skip Age of Ultron. Maybe do Black Panther, Civil War. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah, right. Who cares? No one cares. <laughs> you don't care about this. Yes. People don't care. Some no. Spider Mans. I'll do some Spider Mans. Spider Mans. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, anyway, spoilers. Spoilers, all right. So he wins. Nice. And they probably get the house back, I think. Yep. Gets a girlfriend. Nice. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. And then I left, but I read about it later. Hmm. There's a post credit. Well, yeah, so there's a mid credits and there's a yes. post credits. The post credits is stop motion something or whatever. Yeah, it's the stop motion. It's this little stop motion thing that gets broadcast in the court industry building to like jam their signals, which I thought was a real character. Right. But I'm, I read an article afterwards that suggested that was made up for the movie. But I thought he was a real, like... Okay. Ca- anyway, but the mid credit sequence is we go back to uh, the Cord Mansion mm-hmm. and all the... In, in the Blue Beetle hideout sort of lights up. It goes... It does go... Boop, and then a uh, little communication signal starts up and there's a voice and it says, uh, tell Je- Jenny Cord, Jess- mm. Jenny Cord, tell Jenny Cord that Ted Cord's alive. He's alive. Yeah. And it's Jason Sudeikis. Is it? I mean, it's you know, but the, the portrait he looks like Jason Sudeikis. I, I didn't look. Okay. <laughs> there's a family. There's a family. I love how she's like. I love my mother's vague art. Yeah, right. So we can recast whenever we want. Yeah, I mean, it's not that vague because it's Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> Let's it's, check. I'm going to Google it. Okay. Yeah. So where do you think he is? Uh the quantum realm. Well, that did. I'm like, he's not a shrinky guy generally. No, he's though, not. Is no, he? no, do you no, think no. That's a, apparently, oh, oh, Will Wheaton did it in Batman: Brave and the Bold. Okay. But that's. But the 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 instant I saw the 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 family portrait, the painted portrait, I'm like, that's Jason Sudeikis. It's specifically, I think, Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis. Okay. Because you know when um, Jaime puts on the the tracksuit. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's some Ted Lasso that's true. style tracksuit. Uh, Ted Court appears in Blue Beetle, voiced by an uncredited actor. The version was previously based on the blah 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 version, etc. But that voice doesn't specifically say it's me. I'm Ted Cord. No, it's just a voice of a person saying Ted Cord is alive. Where is he? Do you think? So you said Quantum Realm. Yeah, but I was just kidding because that's a Marvel thing. Yeah, it is. I don't know if you know that. But do you think they've? Um, I think he's been captured at some point. Time travel. Device Ooh. whisked off to another planet because of the scarab technology. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, he needs to get back whatever he's made. Yeah, doing. maybe he just abandoned his family because he's a bad dad. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the, the the next line from this guy was like, "I found him." And I said, "Where were you?" And he's like, "I'm a bad dad. I just left. I went to Vegas." <laughs> that's sick. Happy yeah. one. Um, but yeah, I still think, as mentioned, I think there's definitely room for Blue Beetle in the DCU. Mm. Uh, again, the. I mean, people talk about the Blue Beetle Booster Gold, but maybe they'd want to do original Blue Beetle Booster Gold as opposed to this version. Yeah, Booster right, Gold, right, right. Potentially. Um, or, I mean, I, I would be happy with, um, you know, new Blue Beetle, young Booster Gold. Sure, maybe they yeah, could team absolutely. Up. Maybe he could go to... France. Maybe he could go to France. Yeah. But there's a line in the movie where he's like, oh, I'm not going to go do a graduate degree. I'm not going to go do a thing because... You know, I'll be even more into debt and blah, blah, blah. Maybe he goes to college again mm. for another thing and he meets a booster gold there who's a yeah. time traveler from the future and he's learning about the present day through yeah. college or something and then they team up. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think – I mean, we've got to move it along, Mason. I don't we've think we've got to do. move it along. we got to get it moving, mate. What's happening here? Um, do you think <laughs> – I wasn't I wasn't, uh, I wasn't. aware that this was a particularly slow-paced episode. Hey, we've got we to gotta, we gotta kick it up. With is it because of the energy People that I brought at the start? It is, See, actually. But you, yeah. said, you said don't bring any more. Yeah, I know. But uh, in and high- I'm in the, we, 
In I, hindsight, I in hindsight, you I was could like, have, should I bring you, more? Because otherwise no, the episode will be too have, slow. The problem is you didn't take the initiative. Oh, man. <laughs> so the initiative was to do the opposite of what you recommended. Yeah, man. Oh, Trust damn, your gut. Damn, what this, I always say God, to you sometimes. This is, my, this is my fault. Yeah. Does there need to be a break in DC movies? Now, there might be anyway mm. because yes. of all the strikes yep. happening. Like Superman's at least two years away, probably more. Uh-huh. What are we doing? Like, that's do you think that? Do, I, do you think that's probably a good thing? Just stop for a bit. Just stop. Everybody. I don't know if it is though, because I mean, what if they lose momentum again? What momentum? They're they fucked. It's not working. What if they never gain any momentum? <laughs> that was my like when you said that. My first thought was no. Give us three movies a year. Do the opposite of what Marvel should be doing. Yeah. Just, just because that was the. I I kind of feel like that was the problem. That's why DC kind of lost the the the. Big, there was some big pauses. The big in universe there, yeah. wars where Marvel just went, just do two to three a year. Yeah, and even if you don't like all of them, maybe you like one. Mm. And and you Good know, tell them, mate. and and but they were just like do one and then wait many years and then mm-hmm, do another mm-hmm. one and it's bad and people didn't like it and then wait and a couple more got years. Everyone fired and whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yep. Okay. I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, let's move it along. Let's move it along. What are we doing? I don't know. We're doing what we're reading. What we're gonna read? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> this is a segment of the show where we tell each other the truth about what we've been reading oh, yes. or watching or doing. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, no yeah. lies. No lies. No lies because we can tell. Yeah, we know. If, if either of us lies about what we're reading or watching or doing or whatever, yep. the other guy knows. Yep. And both we both have um, explosive vests and the other one has the trigger. <laughs> That's right. So That's right. You know. And if... If I detect you're lying, I have to ask you to detonate your own vest. <laughs> and will he do it? I don't know. Let's well, find out. Let's find out. <laughs> because it, it's it's a dangerous game, but it's also a gentleman's game. It is. I'm not going to detonate your vest. That'd be rude. That would be so rude. But I can detonate my own vest. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. Detonate your own vest, which is not rude. <laughs> no, that's very civil. I think. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, I've been well. I've been watching Burn Notice as mentioned oh, last yeah, week. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm also catching That's up. That's on... too stupid to be a lie. Yeah, yeah. And I'm also catching up on Magnum PI. God, of course you are. And I'm going to see which one wins. <laughs> what? As in which? What if you get to the end of first? Yes, that's right. Or which one? I'm just like I can't do any more of these. <laughs> Is there ever a crossover? I don't think so. Is Burn Notice ever Magnum PI? Or no, because they're different eras. Yeah, it's not about that though, is it? It is. <laughs> yeah. Definitely is that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, time travel though. Uh, I'm also watching uh, Stanley Tucci searching for Italy. Oh, that's a few years old now, isn't it? Yeah, a couple of a couple of yeah, I, mm. a few years. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but it's just Stanley Tucci going across Italy, different yeah. region every episode, and just having sampling different cuisine and going, ooh, very nice. Yeah, you know, I like that about him. Uh, I like Stanley Tucci generally very much. I, well, generally, so there's been moments you haven't liked him. Transformers. Yeah, the, it was the. The Merlin thing, though. The Merlin the, thing, not the previous the one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if I was uh, producing this documentary series, I would have called it Stanley Tucci, Tucci and Go. <laughs> and that would be his catchphrase. That's he'd go cool. he'd go to a region of Italy and yep. he'd sample all the cuisine and then he'd be like, Tucci and Go. Yeah, I've been giving you a, the Tucci and Go. Yeah, yeah. And now I will do that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It is good, yeah. Is it two seasons? Is that right? Uh, there's just one season over here on SBS On Demand. Whoa, yeah, I love right. that. Uh, James, what have you been reading? I read a novel. A novel? Uh, it's called Recursion. That's novel. Thank you. It's by Blake Crouch. Oh, it sounds like a lot of time travel, but it, you know. Maybe. Oh, uh, it's 2019. Mm-hmm. Here's the synopsis. I love that's, it. Uh, sorry, Beza, it just starts with, that's what NYC cop Barry Sutton is learning. I've cut off some of this. Anyway, this is guys <laughs> investigating this phenomenon called false memory syndrome, where okay. there's a mysterious affliction where... So if, like victims sudden, uh, suddenly have all these what appears to be false memories that may or may not be true, which suddenly their brain is flooded with oh. and they have trouble determining which reality they oh. exist in, if it's a reality thing or if it's like another thing going on. And then they teams up with a neuroscientist called Helena Smith to figure out what is going on with this who might be responsible Sounds like Bones. for some of this. It's a bit like the TV show Bones Sounds in the sense sexy. that there's two people in it. Okay, all right. Um, it is, at first I'm like, oh, this would be like a cool little book like – about like the, the human memory and the mind and mm-hmm. how that works and there'll be a narrative about that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I read too much sci-fi stuff. and no, then it's I, all... See, I was going to say it sounds like sci-fi. Yeah, to me. it's fucking very <laughs> sci-fi. You Mason. got sci-fi, bitch. I did. And then it just like, without spoiling too much of it, it just, it, the whole thing just expands into this fucking nightmare world and whatever. And Interesting, various... okay. In an enjoyable way? Or yeah, oh, no, way? I thought it was really, oh, right, okay. I really enjoyed it. I think it would make a terrific movie with Hugh Jackman maybe. Oh, you know, like the one where... When he, he remembers his memories. When he remembers his memories, which may 
be based on this book. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but no, I enjoyed it. Um, if you like reading books and you like sci-fis and whatnot. Sometimes I like um, reading books. Then this is it might be worth it. I read a book recently that is somewhat similar somewhat. Okay. Uh, by Ben Winters. Mm-hmm. It's part of a trilogy, but I only read the first one. It's called The Last Policeman. Okay. And the premise is that uh, there's a policeman. Okay. He's a police detective and he's investigating uh, a death which looks a lot like a suicide but he thinks it's a murder, so he's going to investigate, mm-hmm. which is pretty standard stuff so far. But also there's an asteroid headed towards Earth and in six months it's going to hit and kill everybody oh. and destroy the world. So he's like, why bother? Everybody's like, why bother? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's sort of a book about like duty and why people do what they do. I think it was described yeah. as like an existential like crime yeah. novel because people are like, yeah, it probably is a suicide because the asteroid's going to kill yeah. everyone. So yeah. It, that's probably yeah, you know. Well, that's cool. And it's also like it's like a children of men vibe. Like, yeah, it is point? very much a children yeah. of men vibe. And it's this vibe of like, okay, so you you find out it's a murder and you catch the and guy, what? you put him in prison, and then the world ends. Why? Yeah, what exactly. are you doing? Kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just wants that feeling when the comments about to hit where it's like, I fucking figured that out. I knew it. I knew it. Like I put <laughs> I got it together. You. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you thought you got away with it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, what was it called again? It's called The Last Police. The la- and there's a few of them. There's three, So, so I, I guess the comet doesn't hit then, spoiler alert. <laughs> Unless there's one set after where it's just like, yeah, yeah nothing. Yeah, yeah. Got hey, it. this was pointless. <laughs> it's not even in a j- jail anymore. I can't put anybody in jail. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, that's all the things we've been reading this week. Got something else for us, Mason? Maybe. What is it, though? It's the letters segment. Wow. The letters theme that goes like this. I love that for you. Here it is. Yeah, I'm ready. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. We do letters on the show. And we move it along. We do. We, people send us letters. Maybe <laughs> they send us a Gmail to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. I'll find some of those Maybe right now. they send us a tweet like uh, hashtag weeklyplanetpod uh, while you're looking. I've got one here from Perry Ritter on Twitter who says hashtag weeklyplanetpod. There's a been there's a there's been there's a lot of discussion on the podcast about what the creator's intended viewing method is. Is there? Maybe. Do you think uh, there is a right or wrong way to watch a TV show or a movie? Oh, as the value uh, is value lost based on the choice of device. Oh. I, I think I'm a firm believer in there is definitely a way that a director or a studio wants you to see the movie. Yes, to have their complete vision. Mm. But even then, some people might not be able to access that. Maybe they don't live near an IMAX, mm. you know. Maybe, or an iPad. Maybe they don't live near an iPad. Maybe they don't live an iPad. Maybe they have a disability where they can't, you know, go to a cinema. Mm. Do you know what I mean? As easily yeah, yeah. as others. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe you just don't want to fucking see the movie. <laughs> Maybe you want to wait, wait and watch it at home. I mean, Christopher Nolan's ideal scenario for you seeing his movie would be seeing it sure. and not not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's as a lover of cinema, he'd be like, well, actually, I think you should see the movie as opposed to not seeing it. Well, too bad I don't want to. I don't <laughs> you wanna, have seen Chris. all of his movies, though. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you want to see a movie in the optimal, <laughs> optimal way, but fuck it, you don't have to. Do what you want. Right, yeah. Do what you want, man. I what mean, do you think? yeah, look. Uh, and sometimes it's good to see like an old, I know you do this, like an old movie, and you're like, I'm going to go to the cinema and watch that old movie. Like you yeah. saw the movie Bullet. I did see the movie Bullet on cinema. a big screen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's certainly, yeah, I mean, I I mean, I think there's always a big advantage in seeing it at the cinema if totally. you can, you know. Yeah. Um, and, but, I mean, you know, this, as as I think we've mentioned in previous weeks, studios are developing what they are calling second screen content, yes. which is stuff to watch while you're on your phone or, you know, that is not that engaging so you can just yeah switch back and forth. So ideally we don't watch those at all and they learn a lesson about that sort of stuff. Ideally. I'm tr- I try very much at this point to, unless I'm making notes for Caravan of Garbage or something yeah. like that, is to leave my phone in the other room Same, yeah. and just focus on on the thing, you know. Mm. And it's this, it's this I, I will also, especially if we're doing Caravan of Garbage, I will try and watch it on a you know on a TV as opposed to an iPad or on mm. my phone or whatever at work or something like that because it's I'm not going to you know we do those to make fun of them to a great degree or Absolutely. at least for, have you know little, little funny little observations about uh, yeah. about the, about the movie but I also still want to give it a fair shot Absolutely you know what I mean? yeah 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 you know definitely uh, especially like when we talk about older stuff I don't no, none of none of the filmmakers of movies from you know Warren Beatty didn't intend for us to watch Dick Tracy on a TV or an iPad or yeah. whatever. You know, well, I should have thought of that because we are and we yeah, have, yeah, and we're yeah. doing it. That's you watched exactly Dick right. Tracy on an iPad? Did I? Yeah. No, I watched it on a TV, but okay. I could have. But that's what I'm saying. Okay, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I mean, that would have been the perfect way to watch Dick Tracy. On a little watch. Oh, a little, oh my God. Dick I Tracy. That would have been actually perfect. You could have bought an Apple Watch, Mason. You oh could have watched God. a little watch. I mean, I could have got an Apple Watch or just one of those little, just yeah. one of the, remember those old in the 80s? There would have been a TV on a, oh, yeah. on a, on a, on a, on a uh, watch. Absolutely. It was um, like an aux cord in there. So for those people who don't know, last week, Caravan and Garbage was the rock. Uh, no, sorry. It was Dick Tracy. This week is the Rocketeer. Head over to bigsandwich.co if you want to see that early. What else you got, Mason, in terms of letters? This is an email from James. James! Hi, boys. I'm a long-time YouTube channel watcher, but I just started listening to your pod during month, Beers. Why did you brag about a, it then? Uh, he's doing it. Right, he says he's immediately won over. Thanks for the great weekly content and real classy dude's energy. Whoa. If you like real classy nice dude's energy, listen to the Big Sandwich Classic Comic Book Club, which is on bigsandwich.co. Slick as fuck, let me tell you. Very slick. Wouldn't you agree? Real classy dude's energy and yeah. dude's rock energy. That's right. Yeah. And this week... Probably Robocop versus Terminator Comics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, a really good one and a really bad one. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So check that out. But also a bunch mm. of other stuff. Now, James says, one of my favorite bits is when Meso predicted the entire plot of the now cancelled El Muerto movie. Oh, yes. Now, and again, I didn't predict it. They sent they me sent the script. It to you, yeah. They sent me the script. We don't know why, um, but that's what happened. Could you guys do an episode where you record your predictions for the plot before watching a movie, then see the movie and review it? This probably would have worked for Blue Beetle, but maybe it could be a good bit for the Craven movie. We should do that. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, do I would, I would ask. We'll do it, mate. Let's do it the week before Craven yeah. comes out. Maybe not like a whole episode, but be like, yeah. here's five minutes. This is what we think will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Cool. I'll, when the final trailer comes out. Yeah. That will be, that will be it. Oh my God. Has there been a, there's been a trailer, right? at least two. Maybe. Okay, great. No, there's been one. I've seen it. I love that. And then they delayed it. They delayed it to like March, didn't they? It was supposed to come out this year. Because mm. nobody could create this, could uh, create, nobody could um, promote this stupid Craven movie. Mm. No, anyway, thank you, James. Uh, anything else in that letter from James? No. Okay, no. I've got one here from Ian Walker who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. If I time this correctly, as you read this, I should be on a 13-hour flight to Tokyo. Obviously, I bought a big sandwich uh, to pass the time. Oh. Mr. Sunday Movies as a well-traveled man. Do you have any tips to pass the time or places to go uh, when I land? Tokyo, uh, I mean, Tokyo I've been drift. there. Tokyo, you could Tokyo Drift. That would be my number one. You yep. go to that, you know that famous corner in Tokyo? But you go to the one mm. that they, uh, the not real one that well, they the used, fake one, the yeah. fake one where they used to shoot movies. Yeah, do go to that one. I want to go to Tokyo and I want to go to an otter cafe. An otter cafe. I mean, I've been to Tokyo. Yeah, you go and they bring and the otters come out and you like pet them and stuff. Oh, huh. yeah. I'm gonna take one. James, you're not allowed. I'm allowed. Okay. Because I'm because I'm, I'm I'm foreign. You're so in I'm a like, foreigner in a foreign country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the rules. <laughs> I didn't know you couldn't steal wildlife. Yeah. You know. Uh it's just food. <laughs> nice. Stop. Great. You know, it's good to Levens. Follow yeah, Andrew thinking, Levens yeah. on uh, Instagram and um, I think he does TikTok as well, but I don't look at TikTok because I don't want to die. Um, and You want to die a little Yeah, bit. I do want to die, but I still don't look at it. But um, not that quickly. But yeah, he's he does a lot of like stuff on like Tokyo and toys and traveling mm, yeah, yeah. and food and all of that. Which, Getcha. Pods yeah. He's been and on so the forth. show. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a cool um, – if you want ideas, that's where it's at. And he loves One Piece. And he loves One Piece. Here's an email from Grant. Need X-Men movie advice. Yes. I'm re-watching all the X-Men movies uh, with a college kid I mentor because he's a big Marvel fan, but only grew up watching the MCU. We just finished X3 and I'm conflicted on where to go from here. I haven't seen Dark Phoenix and I do not want to, but he wants to go through everything so that he is an ultimate X-Men movie context for Deadpool 3 and the eventual X-Men introduction in the Marvel movies proper. Yeah, you might have to. Also, I'm sure whether to watch The Wolverine before or after first class timeline-wise, not the X-Men movies give a flying fart in space about their timelines. Any advice? Just in order, I reckon. Yeah, just, uh, just go. See, I would it. have said if you hadn't started, I would have said X Men, Logan, First Class. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Honestly, what about the Wolverine? Uh, I mean, I like. I quite like the Wolverine, but yeah. I don't think it's worth watching. Okay, Ugh, Days of Future Past. Ah, uh, they go it. back to the sixties, right? And they, yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay, New Mutants. No, Dark Phoenix. No, mm, I don't think the. The younger cast are in the new Deadpool movie anyway. Yeah. I don't know that for a fact. Mm, that's true. Just like I don't know anything. Yeah, see, for ultimate context, I guess you do need to watch all of them. Yeah. I, I think if any – I wouldn't put it, wouldn't put it past – Because I think you're probably going to have to watch Wolverine Origins because oh, yeah. they'll definitely reference They're that. They're definitely going to reference that. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't put it past me if, like, Jennifer Lawrence was in this. Okay, sure, As yeah. Mystique yeah. and, like, as a gag, she's in a scene for, for a joke or something I'm like that. I'm not putting the makeup on again. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's – if if it's anything, it's just Jennifer Lawrence, regular Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. no makeup, and she's like, I'm not transforming into Mystique right now <laughs> for, for reasons. 
That's a fun gag. That's a fun gag. It's a fun a gag. You can have that for free, it's Sean. A free gag. It's a free And we're not in the Sean, right, Sean Levy. Levy. We're not in the Writers Guild, so you can just take that. You can just have it. Yeah. You can have it. And it's then we'll send you a bill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Got another letter, Mason. I might find one. I got one here. One? It's from Justin Spur who says, have either of you seen Spider-Man Lotus? And if you have, what are your thoughts? Now, this is a fan film. What? Well, yeah, it's complicated. Uh, but it turns out that uh, everybody who made it is a big racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so it, it, for, for from what I know, it's a it was a fan film. They got a lot of money to make it. Like yep. I think they maybe they, they were like they weren't happy with the state of the MCU, and they're like we're going to make a true Spider Man fan experience. And and they got a, a guy who looks a lot like Peter Parker, and they yep. got a, uh, you know a good looking Spider Man costume and good looking villain. There's some stuff. good like test stuff. Test yeah, yeah. That they did, and then sort of immediately some stuff. So I couldn't even tell you specifically, yeah. but some stuff, some pretty. Fucking crook stuff surfaced. Yeah, that about I, a, some some people's. Opinions. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't. I couldn't even yeah, tell you who specifically. But yeah. um. Uh, and yeah. And so the whole thing just kind of fell apart. And it did come out. Mm-hmm. And apparently, it's not very good. Yeah. And I just probably won't watch it. Um. I like the idea of something like yeah. that. Uh huh. You know, a passionate fan project, and not just like. But that one also seems driven out of spite. It's like yeah. when they're like, "I'm going to remake the Last Jedi." Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? I also. Something doesn't sit right with me when somebody spends like a hundred grand and they just make a fan film of an existing property. Yeah, kind okay, of thing. yeah, yeah. And like to some degree, you know, because I Nolan got a start doing like a very low budget. He did following was very inexpensive, yeah. right? And that's good. Like, but I, I guess the the thing is that like, if you want a shot at directing stuff now, if if we're in a superhero centric Hollywood, mm. I guess you make a superhero fan film to prove you're good at that sort yeah. of stuff. I think probably the way forward, if that's what you wanted to do, is to create a, a an original property, mm. which is like a testing ground to be like, yeah. oh, you could – like the guys who made Talk to the Hand. Yeah, yeah. They're now doing Street Fighter. That's true. Are they? Yeah. I don't and know that's that. based on – because of all their like YouTube work where they do a lot of stunt and fight yeah, work right. and whatever, and of course the success of Talk to the Hand. Mm. Talk to me for those people who don't know. You should see it if you haven't seen it. But um, I think they should rename it Talk to the Hand because the ghosts are not listening. So I think but if they had have just made fan films, I think studios shy away from that. I know that yeah. the guy who – Josh Trank got a Boba Fett movie briefly uh-huh. before it was taken away from him and he did a Star Wars fan film and they didn't know that. Right. And he reckons that it would have worked against him if they had have known that. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I – yeah, I don't know. I mean I – I just mean as sense of like if you yeah, want to get yeah, the yeah. industry, that's not what yeah. they're looking for. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah. But I guess you know it's a it's a fan film. You can do whatever, yeah, do whatever you, want. you want. I just yeah. think it's interesting that if you get a hundred grand, mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have it. Yeah, I'd have it too. Actually, just give send, me a hundred grand. It, send it to us. Send it to me. Yep. And then I'll send a percentage to James. <laughs> a percentage? Yep. I like that. A, per- a percentage. I like that. Here's an email. All right, we'll John. make it the last one. It's gonna be the last one. All better right. Better be. Better be. Not forever. Okay. Better be. <laughs> Okay, no more emails, folks. Good. No, just kidding. Send send emails. Uh, this is from John. John. This week, Bill Will- Willingham, the creator of the long-running series Fables, announced that he was fed up with DC Comics and their ways of operating and that he would be making Fables a public domain property. Did you see this? Oh, shit. It's on his no, blog. I didn't see that. Uh, I haven't, he says, I haven't read Fables, but I think this is a very interesting development in the comic book industry that could be worth talking about. I've read Fables. Also, it highlights how mismanaged and unsympathetic towards creators DC seems to be, which is always fun to discuss. It's a bleeding cool article, but I think I've, I've got – all right, so this is Bill Willingham's Substack. Mm-hmm. Willingham sends fables into the public domain, so this is a press release. As of now, 15th of September 2023, the comic book property called Fables, including all related fable spin-offs and characters, is now in the public domain. What was once wholly owned by Bill Willingham is now owned by everyone for all time. It's done, and as most experts will tell you, once done, it cannot be undone. Takebacks are neither contemplated nor possible. Ooh. Why did you question? Why did you do this? A number of reasons. When I first signed my creator-owned publishing contract with DC Comics, the company was run by honest men and women of integrity who, for the most part, interpreted the details of that agreement fairly and above board. When problems inevitably came up, we worked it out. Mm -hmm. Since then, over the span of 20 years or so, those people have left or been fired to be replaced by a revolving door of strangers of no measurable integrity who now choose to interpret every facet of our contract in ways that only benefit DC Comics and its owner companies. At one time, the Fables properties were in good hands, and now by virtue of attrition and employee replacement, the Fable properties have fallen into bad hands. Ooh. So for people who don't know Fables so is... What, what, so why is he allowed to do that, though? Well, he... he so he... It's... As, as far as I can tell, it's... Mm. 
So normally, normally with comic book stuff, it's it's work for hire. If you do, if you create a character for a Batman comic, DC owns the character. Yeah. Even if they make lunch boxes or action figures or whatever, you don't get any more money out of that. You just got paid for your the day you worked there. But this is a creator owned thing, so he publishes through DC, but he still owns the 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 the, the concept and the character and all that sort of stuff. So he, so as I understand it, he can't stop them from making a movie. Right, okay, like a yeah. Fables movie, yeah. but also now anybody can make a Fables movie if they want to. Cool. So uh, hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll jump towards the end. Oh, yeah, here's the, here's the question. What exactly has DC Comics done to provoke this? Whoa. Too many things to list exhaustively, but here are some highlights. Uh, throughout the years of my business relationship with DC, with Fables and with other intellectual properties, DC has always been in violation of their agreement with me. Usually it's in smaller matters like forgetting to seek my opinion on artists for new stories or for covers or formats of new collections. In those times when called on it, they automatically said, sorry, we overlooked you again. It just fell through the cracks. They use just fell through the cracks line so often and so reflexively that I eventually had to bar them from using it ever again. <laughs> they are so, they're often re- late reporting royalties and often under report said royalties, forcing me to go after them for, to pay the rest of what's owed. God um, damn. And so, ba- yeah, so... Lately, their practices have grown beyond mere annoyances, prompting some sort of showdown. First, they tried to strong-arm the ownership of Fables from me. When Mark Doyle and Dan Didio first approached me with the idea of bringing Fables back for its 20th anniversary, both gentlemen since fired from DC, during the contract negotiation for the new issue, their legal negotiators tried to make it a condition of the deal that the work be done as work for hire, as we mentioned, effectively throwing the property irrevocably into the hands of DC. When that didn't work, their excuse was, sorry, we didn't read your contract going into these negotiations. We thought we owned it. Great. So so it's like a bunch of new new guys. Yeah. Um, and just seeing what they can get away with. See what exactly what they can get away with. So apparently he's like, their lawyers are probably like, well, if you don't like it, you can sue. Yeah. Which takes years and money and yeah. blah, 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 and most people can't afford it and you have to get, you usually have to get legal aid and set up a, you know, a, um, a GoFundMe or something like that and it's all the whole thing. Yeah. Um, okay, here it is. This, this is the last bit. If I understand the law correctly, he says, you have the rights to make your Fables movies and cartoons and publish your Fables books and manufacture your Fables toys and do anything you want with your property because it's your property. Mark Buckingham, the artist, is free to do his version of Fables and I hope he does. And so on. You don't have to get my permission, but you might get my blessing depending on your plans. You don't have to get DC's permission or the permission of anyone else. You never signed the same agreements I did with DC Comics. Ah, so, okay. like, the the idea being here is, like, and they didn't pay him for the Telltale game apparently. Oh, and, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, it says uh, yeah. Anyway, but uh, that's ex- very exciting. That is exciting. So, uh, yeah, as I understand it, like, he can't. Sorry, I just gotta, I, sorry, I got to yeah. let Claire in. All right. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Don't apologize to me. <laughs> That's you. I've been, oh, I'm going to let my wife in. Oh, <laughs> I had to run. I never must have done properly. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, what else? I could tell they were flapping about. Yeah, so basically, what I, as from what I understand it, the, the basic gist here is Bill Willingham can't go out and make his own Fable movie yeah. because he's signed like various agreements with DC and contracts that if he makes something like that, he has to do it through them. Big trouble. But nobody else has signed those agreements, so they Love can do that. what they want. Good so, for him. Yeah, I mean, that being said, we'll see what the legal. Yeah, like well, I'm. I, I'm sure DC will. Yeah, try but I'm on. also curious as to whether. Maybe Pete, like what I think might happen here is somebody will like try and make a Fables fan film or make a Fables mm. comic or something, and DC will sue them to be like, because they've got so much money, yeah. and they'd be like, they could drag it out. For we'll that. drag this yeah. out, and we'll we'll crush the first people who do this, yeah. so that nobody ever risks doing it again. Exactly. But I think if we all make our own Fables comic, they can't get us At all. At the same so time, yeah. that's right. Oh yeah, for, for people who don't know, Fables is a uh, it's about a um, it's fairy tale characters, but it's yeah, the fairy tale characters they've been they've been sort of. Um, forcibly ejected from the the the, yeah. re, the the land of fables, and they've set up in Fable Town, which is like a like a um, New York City baby, New York City neighborhood, but it's magical, so you can't necessarily see it, and yeah. et cetera. And it's Absolutely. all various adventures and and uh, mysteries and murders and all Ooh, sorts of stuff that happen in a, in a in a neighborhood in New York, baby. And then yeah. epic, it's good, it's really good. And then epic wars and the like. Epic, there is an epic war. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I tuned out after the epic war. All right, Mason, is that the show? <laughs> that is the whole show. Thank you so much, folks, for listening. We very much appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, want to tell a friend, we, we wouldn't mind that at all. We don't care. That's right. If you want to tweet about the podcast, we wouldn't mind that at all. We don't care. Put it put it on the put on the put on the socials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We would like that. Thank you. 
Kenna, if you'd like to leave a five star review in app, we do care on your this. podcast catcher of choice. This is we from, would very much appreciate right. that too. It's from Fatty Pros who says five stars. A comedic and comfy comic podcast. Since I subscribed to Mr. Sunday Movies on the YouTube oh. years ago, I, I, I was surprised I waited until now to start listening to the podcast. I don't listen to many podcasts and just discovered I can uh, I can sort it from first to last. And as it stands, I've listened backwards from numbers four five nine to. Uh, 425, and whenever these fellas start going back and forth, hilarity ensures. Uh, very kind words all it's around. Very nice. And this is from Cam, who says, Getting my fix between the week of the planet <laughs> and road trip cinema. I'm getting all my movie fix for my drive to and from work. My only issue is I wish I had more. Road trip cinema, that sounds bad. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't listen to it. I'd listen to the weekly planet. I completely agree. Actually, yeah. I'd probably, I'll probably check out. I hope you've is. also left them a review, Cam, yeah, since that. you love it so much. Love it so much. Yeah. Uh, folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting mm. Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord if you want to have fun at civil chats about podcasts and pop culture. Very friendly people over there, including our moderators, uh, Maisie <laughs> and Sarabi and Fidel. That's right. And, of course, Rob Collings, pal yeah. Rob Collings. They also get all, get up to all sorts of stuff like TikToks and, uh, we and clips, clips channels and, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're doing, uh, I was going to say the Lord's work. They're absolutely not, but they are doing good work. God would not want this. Absolutely not. That's right. Uh, folks, if you want to follow some people on the socials, first of all, follow Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. He'll give you all the Weekly Planet news and updates. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and uh, on Instagram. I'm Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. everywhere. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You're chucking a buck. Chucking a buck. Amount you would not miss. Uh, but if you want all sorts of uh, bonus podcasts and movie commentaries and all sorts of extra stuff and you've got some big deep pockets you can pay nine us dollars per month at big and you get all that stuff it's a good old time right. uh thank you to the brute and the basilisk and rack them for all, all our musical themes, themes. Next t-shirts week. are a t-public oh, yeah. next week the creator oh is that okay great i believe so yeah I love that. Or it might be the week after i love the sound of that it might be the week after doesn't matter <laughs> definitely something good next week yeah though. probably snake eyes I hate but, snake eyes all right thanks everyone grab that gem you guys we'll see you next week bye Goodbye.